Hey there, everyone. Um, the Navian Error 003 2.00 has been plaguing people for quite some time, and it's a little tricky, I've found. There's a few different things that seem to be contributing to it, and I'm gonna walk you guys through what I saw and what I did with the help of the Navian phone tech support to solve the problem. So here is the board as it looks with normal operation. The temperature is set to 125. Okay, once we get our unit open, one of the first things we wanna look at is the air filter. That's right up here. This is the inlet air filter. Very simple, just one screw and pull this out. Okay, we pulled out the air filter. We wanna make sure that there's uh, not blocked in any way. I've pulled it out a couple of times and found some pretty big uh, wasp nests in here. This can uh, interrupt the airflow and uh, cause some weird uh, messages and situations within the uh, fuel to air mixture ratio. So you wanna get that cleaned up as soon as you can. Easy piece of cake, one screw, slide it out, dump it out, slide it back in. You can see right up here where the uh, receptacle is or the, the little uh, holder for it. Okay, this is the first step that I tried in addressing the error Navian 240A, NR240A, error 003 2.00. First, I tried installing a new flame rod. The 003 error told me that it was an ignition problem. So I ordered this part number from Navian. It was fortunate to arrive in two days from the supply depot. And I watched a video on YouTube about how to remove the um, blower to get to the, sorry, my fingers are pointing in the wrong direction, to get to the uh, flame rod unit, which is right here. You can actually see the flame rod unit when it's ignited through this little window. So there are three screws that we need to look at. One, two, and three. These are easy to take out, but I would recommend either a, an extension for your power tool or a long screwdriver to get to these in particular right here. So I've taken out those screws and just a personal trick of mine is I like to place the screws on the unit in the location that they would go back when I screwed them back in. So this would be the top, this would be the bottom right, and this would be the bottom left. Note that these screws are all different. Okay, you can see up in here where the blower goes into the uh, burner itself and the little bracket here in the bottom left uh, where the shortest screw goes. We have all three screws out. You can see that screw is gone. Here's your flame rod. And now you just kind of twist the unit out. Okay. What I have done is I set up a little hanger right here uh, with just some copper wire so I can suspend this without leaning uh, or pulling on any other wires in the unit and that will open up some area to uh, work on. Once you pull the blower out you'll see the flame rod unit. It's a ceramic piece. You have two plugs and you have this wire here. This is your uh, wire uh, to the flame rod that communicates with the uh, PCB board to tell your system if you have a flame or not. These are the ignition wires, these uh, pointy angled connectors. These will go first to this unit and then into the little brown plug with two blue wires right there that also communicate with the board to send uh, ignition spark. There are two screws in here. You'll undo each screw and then just simply pull the, uh, and gently pull the flame rod unit out. It's not very big. Here's what the old flame rod looked like. A new one has a gap between here of about an eighth of an inch. You can see that it's almost half an inch in gap, if, if not half an inch. It's been badly burned over the years. It's over 10 years old. And the flame rod itself, you can see how um, warped it has become over time. Okay, we've dropped the new flame rod in and we've made sure to properly seat the insulation that goes around that. That comes with the part, two different insulation pieces, one for inside 
of the little steel cage and another for the outside. Definitely very important for this stuff. Now we're going to plug the connectors back in. I just make sure to plug them in in the same um, location, although this is a, um, a system that should not require them to be in the same location, or you can swap them in, in either location, but just being uh, uh, exercising an abundance of caution, I'll make sure to put them in the same location. Okay, we've, we've plugged the units back in and we've reseated the insulating boots. We're making sure that our wire our flame rod connector wire is clear because we don't want that to get pinched when we put the blower back in. Okay, we have the blower mounted back. We've got the screws tightly mounted. So that one in the lower right, right here, was always tricky for me. So just be careful that you're not stripping out the hole when you mount it back. We have our flame rod connector again hooked up and both of the electrode connectors are connected. And we're confirming that we have not pinched or compromised the wire with our mount um, uh, as we replaced the blower. So to remove the motherboard, we're going to be looking at three screws. We've got the one on the top, and we've got two underneath. Sorry, I'm feeling my way around. One here, and then one on the other side. I've got an isolation mount damper to this thing to keep it quieter. So I, this mount underneath, I'll have to slide back and forth to remove these screws. The tricky, the tricky part that we're going to be facing is getting this screw out right here. It's very, very low clearance and about the only thing that I found that I was able to use to at least start it to get out. That was one of these cheap little 90 degree ratchet uh, angle screwdrivers. They're only a few bucks at Lowe's or Home Depot. And if you don't already have one, uh, they're handy for a lot of different things. So I would recommend go ahead and getting one regardless. So one of the gotchas that I encountered is even the stubby screwdriver was too big. And af after I started getting this screw out, my ratcheting low profile one was too big. So I had to use a basically a, just a bare drill bit to get this out and just turn it with my fingers once I started it. Piece of cake, these are only a couple cents. Okay, here we have taken off the screws for the PCB board. Got here, we've got the screw that comes up under the case here. The screw that comes up under it under the case right here and we've taken this the screws to these two wires off so we're ready at this point to start just pulling plugs one by one and swapping out the board okay once you have the motherboard out and the screws uh, uh, released you can go ahead and take a look behind here to see if there are any critters or bugs or anything you want to clear out you can also take a look at removing the power switch. That's pretty important. And we'll need to remove these wires and then pop the switch out. Okay, to pop the switch out, you'll need to go in from the back here, top and bottom. You'll see these little plastic tabs here. Use a small screwdriver to go in the back, push those tabs down, and then push the switch out from the front. Okay, now I've got the power switch out. And being paranoid about wiring, I wanted to wait to do that to uh, before I removed these plugs and allowed the wires to get completely out. And I'm taking close notes as to which end is positive, which end is uh, power on, and how the wires are oriented. Okay, now we popped our power switch out. Our dead motherboard is sitting there preparing for burial. Our shiny new motherboard is ready to go in. Okay, first we're just gonna pop this power switch right back in. Click, click, piece of cake. And then we're gonna put our wires back in the way we originally photographed them and to make sure that they are properly connected. 
Okay, here's a power switch connected back up. Blue, black, black, white. And here is the motherboard ready to start the plugs um, reinsertions. Uh, even though these plugs are keyed, that means you it's impossible to mix the plugs up because each plug on here is actually uh, unique for the board. So every connector uh, will not fit in any of the other plugs except its own. Even though, just as a habit, I have always taken photographs of just about every angle of these kind of uh, situations just to make sure my own stupidity doesn't wind up short-circuiting a $150 board. Okay, to summarize what we've done, uh, we've replaced or emptied the air filter, making sure we didn't have any bugs or junk in there. We've replaced the flame rod assembly right in there. We pulled off the blower as a result of all that. We've replaced the motherboard and we've checked and ensured that the dip switches on the new motherboard match the settings on the old motherboard. We have our unit plugged in and we have some water running and we will fire it up and see what happens. Goes through the startup sequence. so far and let's see we are looking at a nice flame you can see the flame rod getting hotter in the back there and it the one to the upper left is the uh, actual pincher looking uh, igniter the flame rod is telling the PCB that yes it's hot I have a flame the flame is nice and even. No error codes. I think we have it. This entire effort took about 90 minutes start to finish. It cost about $200 in parts. We involved one screw there, three screws total to get the blower off, two screws to replace the flame rod, three screws to remove and replace the motherboard. If that amount of time and work sounds like about $300 worth of savings, then yeah, yeah, I think it would be worth the effort. Because you know a service guy is gonna charge you $100 to knock on the door, they're gonna look at it, they're gonna say, yeah, you need these parts, they're gonna order the parts at full markup, they're gonna come back later, a few days, uh, probably longer than it took for these parts to arrive, for to reinstall them and they're going to charge you a hundred dollars an hour for labor so five hundred dollar bill from their side is going to be conservative two hundred dollars is what we know it's going to cost to do it ourselves if you've got 90 minutes worth of time i'd say that's money well spent i hope this works for you knock on wood if you have any questions uh, leave them in the uh, message section thank you